page of TFNN, folks. Head on over to the front page of TFNN.com. Our man, Teddy Kegstad, he has kicked off the Tiger Forex Report this week with his first issue on Monday. Uh, you can subscribe to that, folks, risk-free. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. And the best part is, for the month of July, we're running for one month. You can become a charter member by signing up as Teddy has launched his report. You can lock in 25% savings for the life of your subscription, folks. It's 97 bucks a month, okay? You get 25% off of that number. I think it brings you down to 72, 75. I gotta pull the exact number out of my head. Uh, but please, sign up, and the best case is you sign up, you lock in the savings. Worst case scenario, you cancel, you can get a money back guarantee uh, for 30 days. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Well, did we pick a good enough day to bring you on, Teddy, with the chairman talking? And we got some action in the Forex market right now as I'm looking at these charts. The euro pulling back a bit. Not sure what they're saying. Um, uh -huh. Not sure if they're saying anything, but the market's reacting so far this morning. What are you looking at this morning, Teddy? Well, everything. The dollar has been swinging all over the place today. I mean, the dollar was under pressure a lot. The U.S. dollar Swiss made new lows again today, and they were really burying the the, uh, the offer, without a doubt, you know, earlier today. And then all of a sudden, yeah. about a half an hour ago, we got a little bit of a bid in the U.S. dollar. Um, the British pound started to finally move, and that's been a tough grind, you know, for a Ooh. week. I mean, if you look at the dollar index, it's been sideways, really, basically, for the past week and a half, two weeks, you know, winding its coil. And I think we're starting to see it. we're at that friction point where they the, these markets have to move. You know, I mean, we have the U.S. dollar yen that just broke out to the upside this morning just a few minutes ago to make new highs. Oil is creeping higher. So and I think you're going to start to see a lot of swinging again and the trends reemerge again in all those markets. Yeah, pretty cool action um, we have going on. We got the 10 year this morning. What are we sitting about? 3.18 percent right now. Um, what did you think of just the market pullback yesterday? I was talking to my dad yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. or this morning, one of them. He had a great conversation with you on Monday. And one of the things he was saying is it feels like, and we're all biased, but the Forex market right now is so important. I mean, you've given us a great education talking about our interest rates, right? How the interest rates mm -hmm. drive the strength in a currency, because as you're getting a higher interest rate, money is gonna flock to that currency. That'll maybe boost the, the currency action. So the US, ahead of the curve, higher interest rates coming at you, putting some strength into the dollar. Uh, and then we have the market yesterday pull back 150 points as we're sitting there. Uh, what do you think of the market reaction right now with the S&P having, I mean, that was just like a three and a half percent move, Teddy, and the S&Ps mm -hmm. really not too huge of a reaction, but so much of what's going on right now has to do with the strength of the dollar, especially commodities. We're talking about gold, right? What happens right. to commodities if we, eventually, we should get to the point, to get to my question, where we finally reached the point that the Fed has achieved their goal, right? We've hiked enough that hopefully they get inflation under control. I know that's a big, tall order, but eventually it should happen. Mm -hmm. And then we start to ease those numbers and maybe Europe is behind us and then start hiking. So what do you think as that relates to this market when we eventually get there of how those rates are gonna kinda play into each other with the US ahead of the rest of the world right now giving the mm -hmm. dollar so much strength? Um, well, here's the here's the thing is with the, when it comes to like a smart, like especially central banks trying to play catch up like the ECB, um, they, they they are going to start raising rates. They have to um, just for for multiple reasons, just to defend their currency for one. Uh, and then you had the, the Swiss have already done so. That's why you had that first initial pullback off of parity, you know. So and they're probably going to do it again, you know. So they're ahead of the ECB. Um, now, the question is, is are they going to be as drastic? I don't think they are. I don't think they can. You know, so I mean, we are we should have done this a long time ago, cool. you know, so but we have the capacity to do this that whereas they don't, you know, great point. So and, and that and that differential is what's giving the dollar its strength. I mean, when the dollar okay. turns, it's going to be very bad. Yeah. Now, what, what do you think would happen to the gold contract? We got a lot of gold bulls out there uh, mm -hmm. when if when you know we do get some dollar weakness, I imagine at some point it may ease a bit. Um, not sure it's going to have the the fall off factor for the reasons that you stated. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. But what do you see happening maybe with gold if we do eventually get some pullback in dollar strength, um, even though the Fed late to the party? What do, what do you think happens with gold? Oh, I in think that you're going to see a monster rally in gold. 
Oh, you just caught a huge fan base at TFN and no, yeah. go, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Rally. I'm not, and I don't think it'll be just a little spike. I think you're going to see like, you know, like I remember when I first started like studying the markets, especially in, in depth and stuff. And you have these periods where you have really big booms and busts, you know, and I, I'm a big, you've heard me say it multiple times, markets go out like they come in. I see gold having a very radical spike. Now, I don't know if it's sustainable, but I could see it easily seeing upwards of a 20 to 30 percent um, appreciation in price from where it's at right now. Easily, easily and very quickly as well. So especially when the dollar turns, you know, so I mean, I've been saying it for a long time. It's not that the dollar is strong. It's that all these other currencies are that weak. You know, yes. so and and you're starting to see, you know, there's there's a there's a tension now because of all these Russian Ukraine, you know, sanctions on Russia. It's hitting Europe very, very hard. It's what happens if in another let's say that, that we stay where we're at right now. We don't have any break in the in the Russian uh, conflict. Where's the ECB going to stand a year from now? You might be looking at a country like Germany pulling out of the EU, you know. So, I mean, why wouldn't they? You know, just for their own sake, you got to remember a war started because of hyperinflation in Germany once, you know, and after World War Two, before they were part of the, you know, the EU, Germany always had a, a platform of low unemployment, low interest rates and absolutely low inflation. And, and that was their absolutely they were living day by day to make sure that did not change because they knew it would spark another war, you know. Sure. Well, look at what's going on right now. You have rampant inflation. Unemployment is skyrocketing in Germany, you know, because of manufacturing plant closings, you know, all over the place. This can't persist. It's going to cause a big problem in the EU. So I, I see a lot of instability in the euro coming up over the. It's definitely over the next, not right now in the next three months, but about six months from now, it's really going to start to come to a head. Yeah, we got a very interesting three months, six months, 12 months. I use that time that mm -hmm. time frame all the time, but it is uh, so volatile, so much economic data coming down the line and so much volatility right. in terms of where the Fed goes over that period of time and where the whole globe goes. And, and, and economic folks, data, which you just said, that is the big key. That's really going to be the driver of all these trends. And I have to say, I'm not Debbie Downer, but none of it looks good. <laughs> oh. Tell, show me a show me a good number, Teddy. Right? I mean that that, right. that indicates that we're coming out of this because, right. you know, you can be a little hopeful with some of the numbers maybe pointing to future mm -hmm. numbers telling us that it's almost right. comical when you put it that way. Um, but mm -hmm. we're basically at peak inflation right now, and that's what you have to hear. And what's so cool about being a trader is for so long traders were able to push that number back say it's okay it's it's going to ease in the second half of mm -hmm. 2022 because the comps are going to be easier right well we're there folks right. and you yeah. see it it's still high numbers yeah. and now you get the fed realizing it um so we're in mm -hmm. that volatile time and folks you heard what teddy said even if you don't trade forex pairs okay and i don't trade them a lot sign up for teddy's report folks because they shape everything we do right now you heard the conversation about gold okay teddy takes a look at oil he takes a look at the bond in there he takes a look at the currency pairs check it out on the front page of tfnn new issues every week and lock in the 25 percent comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee teddy we appreciate the update man you have a great july 4th thank you and we'll Tommy. talk to you after the holiday you man okay Absolutely. enjoy sounds great